All right, let me know when we're good. All right, uh, we are good to go. All right, so uh, hi everybody, how's it going? Um, just want to start off with a quick introduction. My name is Ryan Rossi. I am the event supervisor for Water Bottle Rockets. Um, I've been doing this a long time. I was in this event from when I was in fourth grade all the way through now where I'm 26. So it's been a, been a long, long time. Um, been doing this and been around and I think it's a really, really fun event for kids. And it's, um, you know, really fun, fun event for, uh, to still be a part of, you know, you know, 16 years later or so, um, back from when I was 10 years old. So, um, Today, I'm just going to kind of roll through the rules real quick, and then um, I'll leave time for questions. Uh, we probably won't be taking up the whole time just because um, you do have the rule sheet available to you already. Um, it's not the first time that we're, we're getting them. They're online. And um, so instead of reading out the rules, I like to leave time for questions at the end. I know we have a smaller group, uh, you know, this year than we usually do. So maybe that might mean less questions, but um, like we got we got the time to do it now today so we can get all those answered. Um, so first, um, we'll start with the construction of the rocket. There are no height restrictions at all. So you can make a rocket as tall as you want or as small as you want. The only rule is you have to use, um, you cannot use, um, I don't wanna say this, you cannot use anything different than a two liter bottle. Um, and that means you can add on to a two liter bottle, but you cannot change a regular two liter bottle. So if you guys see the picture that's uh, on the screen right now with our launcher, you can see that this team chose to build on top of their rocket with some more two liter bottles. You can do anything like that. Um, all of that is legal, but you can't change anything to the two liter bottle um, that's gonna hold the water and hold the air. Um, if you do, there's a chance it explodes. It's happened a couple years ago. Uh, a team sanded down the side of their bottle and it didn't take the pressure. So um, you start with that base two liter bottle and you can do anything you want on top of it. Just don't change it. Um, that would be, and again, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be bad because it wouldn't be allowed to launch. It wouldn't pass our checklist uh, to get up there. So you definitely wanna make sure you don't do anything to that original uh, two liter bottle. Um, the bottle has to be clear with your school uh, name, team number, um, all that stuff on the rocket. It has to be clear. Last year it had to be green. It's just so we know that the um, that you, teams aren't using the same rocket in multiple years. Um, so, again, make sure you don't mess with that bottle, scratch it, ding it up. You can build on top of it. All that's good to go. Just don't change the actual two-liter bottle that holds the water. Um you can add in just as that picture shows you can add in um wings of course you can do whatever you want in that sense we've had rockets that are made without wings we've had rockets that had wings that were bigger than the rocket itself so we've seen it all um it's a lot of freedom to the kids to be able to decide uh what to what to go off of um a lot of materials are allowed for that you can use uh you know cardboard we've seen construction paper we've seen um, you know, uh, DVD discs that were cut in half that um, that were put on the side. So you have a lot of freedom in that sense. All we asked is that they're not sharp to a point in terms of like at the top of the rocket. So it has to be a dull top. So if you put a nose cone on it or if you something like that, we ask that it cannot be sharp where it's going to have a point to it. It has to have a dull top. Um, the wings, I mean, you cut a triangle, as you guys can see there, the wings come to a point, but the top of the rocket, anything that's going to be coming down cannot be sharp. Um, no metal. Uh, the only metal that is allowed um, is a little uh, fish swivel hook that you can put in the parachute. Outside of that, you cannot have anything. Um, and again, most of those are plastic anyways now. Um, but that that's no metal anywhere on the rocket. Um, you can't just buy stuff for your rocket. So you can't go out, buy a model rocket and take the parachute out of it and put it in and say, hey, we have a parachute. Um, everything has to be made from a scratch. So no commercially made rocket products for it. Um, now you can you can use the things that you buy and repurpose them and all sorts of stuff. 
Um, like we've seen parachutes made out of plastic bags, like Ziploc bags. We've seen parachutes made out of on um, the painting tarps. We've seen them made out of just regular grocery bags. So again, lots of freedom to decide there. Um, just going through the rules here. I think I'm missing there. Uh, you can use whatever glue you would like. And um, so no glue restrictions at all. Um, just make sure, again, you don't damage that pressure vessel, the part of the bottle that's going to hold the air in the water. So all glue is good. Let's see what else. No sharp objects. Okay, the, the wings or fins of your rocket. Um, so as you can see by this picture that's on the screen, there's a little box that it holds it in. So you have to have the wings above uh, two inches higher than the bottle opening. And that's just so if you see that picture there, that is so you don't run into a problem where you have to move the wings up on launch day or else it won't fit on the launcher. So it has to be two inches off of the bottom of the bottle, the opening of the bottle. Um, and that's just so it fits on our launcher there. Um, we provide the water, so you guys don't have to worry about bringing anything like that. That's going to be there um, from us. Um, it's just regular water, no other options. All of the um, bottles are pressurized to the same uh, PSI. Um, and lastly, parts of your rocket may separate during flight, but they must remain attached together by a string. So how it works is, yes, you can have a nose cone that falls off, but that when it falls off, it still has to be attached to the rocket. So rocket goes up, nose cone falls off, it's on a string, it's connected to the rest of the rocket, you're good to go. But rocket goes up, nose cone falls off, and it breaks away from the rest of the rocket. Then that rocket falls down to the bottom bracket. Okay. Um, day of the competition. A uh, big thing that we just like to remind you guys of is have safety goggles. Um, we don't have those for the kids. Um, so make sure we have safety goggles to do so. Um, you're going to be asked to, when you come in to check in your rocket you're going to have to unpack everything um and repack it and talk about your rocket so it's important um to to make sure that the kids know how to do everything um and the kids you know come up with those ideas um well, you're going to have two launches each on each on a different launcher so we get there in the morning we set up one launcher, we set up the other. That's where they stay all day. Every single team is going to get one launch off of each one. So there's no there's no advantage or disadvantage there. Um, both of the launchers put them at the same PSI. It's all pressurized the same way. Um, and you get two launches. Your best launch is going to be the one that, uh, one that counts. And um, your second launch is going to be uh, the tiebreaker, I believe, is the second launch. Um, and that's that's pretty easy there. Um, and how the scoring works is, I just mentioned that bottom bracket. So when we launch your first rocket, say everything goes really, well, really, really well, say so you get like a minute up in the air. Um, well, if your next launch goes up and you have it completely uh, explode in the air and you lose wings, everything's on the ground. You do you that rocket drops in the bottom bracket, but your time is still what your first launch was. So that best time is what's going to be um, going to be counted. Um, so any any launch that where the rocket stays together goes above any rocket that um, any rocket that broke apart. So again, we've seen it before where a rocket goes up and it gets a minute in the air, but a wing fell off that minute is going to be below a rocket that does one second that stays together. Um, this is a big one. It's really important that the rocket is made well. Um, we are outside. The conditions um, are usually aren't on our side for some, whatever reason it is. It's been a long time since we've had a nice, uh, you know, 70 degree day with zero wind. It's going to be windy. It might even rain. It might even, you know, it snowed on us before. So it might be any of those things. But one thing that happens almost every year is we get up there and we pressurize the rocket. 
And um, once the rocket is pressurized, the kids are not allowed to touch it. The only person that's allowed to touch it is myself or whoever is running that launcher. And the problem that comes with that is we can never do it as good as what the kids want it to be. And we have to do it. Sometimes we have to hold the nose cone on top of the rocket until we press the button to launch. Um, and the wind, a lot of times, screws things up when it comes to uh, things falling apart right on the launch pad. We've had teams that have sat up there um, where I've had to repack their whole parachute for them because there's already pressure in the launcher. So make sure it's well built because we don't want that wind to just blow it off in the launcher because then the kids, you know, it's tougher. It makes it hard. So that's a that's a tip that I'm giving you is make sure it stays to it's it's together. It's well built. It's not flimsy. Um, you want to kind of make it make it sturdy so wind doesn't affect it as it's being pressurized. Um, so scoring that's done by how long the rocket stays in the air. So we score it if it goes for, uh, you know, 15 seconds goes up, parachute opens get 20 seconds from the time we hear the water leave the rocket makes a distinct noise timer start until something hits the ground or another object so if it hits gets stuck in a tree we stop it when it hits that tree if it hits a light post we stop it when it hit that hits that light post or if it hits the ground we stop it when it hits the hits the ground um same thing if you get a really good launch we've had rockets that have gotten caught in the jet stream and never came back where it would drop down three feet and go up 10 feet, drop down three feet, go up 10 feet. And rockets that we've never recovered that were in the air for seven, eight minutes. Um, so we stop it when we lose sight of it. Um, the timers do their best to run with a rocket if it's a good one to make sure everybody gets um, the most time that is allowed there. Um, longest time wins. And again, you can have a rocket that stays in the air, but if a wing falls off, we stop the time when the wing falls off. So you can have a really, really successful launch. Wing falls off, hits the ground. Timer stops when that wing hits the ground. So it's, again, important to that sturdiness that things stay together. And the last rule that is not written in here, which I, again, it's it's the most important rule. The most important rule is let your kids do it. Let the kids have fun. Uh, we see it every year where kids get up there and the kids are not good liars. We will ask them, hey, how do you do this rocket? And the kids will say, I don't know. My dad built it. And again, that's no fun for that's no fun for the kids. This is a fun event. This isn't A is for anatomy where kids are, you know, studying for, you know, information for a long, long time. And they finally get to show it off the day of. This is an event where, you know, you'll be surprised. A rocket goes up, comes straight down, hits the cement and explodes everywhere. Sometimes the kids are even more excited that that happened than a good launch. So let the kids do the work, um, and you'll be really, really surprised what kids come up with. I'm a teacher. I see it all the time. Um, kids have freedom to be creative, and they'll, they'll do some amazing things. So really, really let them do the work. Let them come up with the ideas. It is your role as a coach to help them execute their ideas, not to give them the ideas. Um, help them understand, hey, this is why we do it this way. Why don't you try it this way? and help them execute those ideas rather than, you know, taking it into the garage or taking it into work and making it for them. And then, hey, here's a rocket the day of, maybe you'll win, maybe you maybe you won't. But I can tell you right now, uh, really, really let the kids go on this. Let them come up with the ideas and it's your job to guide them in it. Um, so that's really all I have when it comes to the rules. I went through the rule sheet there. Um, and then that last thing about, hey, really let the kids take over. Um, that's all that's really there. If you guys have questions, now would be the time to ask them. You can put them on the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask the questions. Yep. Also, if you guys can, please put your email in the chat. What I will do is I'll keep those emails, and if we do a practice run, I will send an email to everybody where we'll send you the location and time where I will I will come with the launcher, and you guys can do a test launch. Hi, I've got a question. Yeah, what's up? Um, so you said something about the 
if a wing falls off, it goes in the bottom bracket. Yep. And then when you explained it later on, you said that if you got like a really high rocket and the wing falls off and hits the ground, your time will stop. Yeah. When the wing hits. Yeah. But does so if the rocket stays intact totally and gets like a 10 second time, but one's off in the air for two minutes and a wing hits the ground, the 10 second one would still win over the two minute one. Yes. Or- yes. Yes. So again, our job, the timer's job is to be watching for if a rocket piece comes apart. It's really obvious when it does, because it doesn't usually happen at the end of a launch. It happens right at the beginning. So there might be a timer who doesn't see it because of the angle they're standing at, but the other two timers see it. So they stop their clock and then somebody shows like, Hey, it was two minutes, but hang on. One wing fell apart at 10 seconds. It goes down to 10 seconds. We've also had rockets fall apart at the very end. And we have a two minute rocket that a wing fell off as it was floating through the air um, and landing. So yes, anything that stays together goes above anything that comes apart. Okay. Yep. All right, let's see here. I think Michelle has a question. Michelle, I see your hand up. Yeah, I saw the hand pop up there. Yeah, I just want to double check that all the specifications for the parachute are on the website. Yes. Um, Let me look at the rules here for parachute. So the parachute, um, there are no real specifications for what you are and aren't allowed to do as long as you follow the rules of, hey, you're not buying a parachute from the store or you're not um, buying buying an actual parachute or using metal or anything like that. So when it comes to specifications, you can do a lot of different things. Um, if that makes sense. So there's really, you can make it as big as you want. You can make it as small as you want. We've had teams throw two or three parachutes in there. Um, Does that kind of answer your question? It does. So I just want to make sure um, also, like if we use like a cover, something on top of the rocket, if that's okay. Like, what do you mean a cover? Well, I mean, I'm just thinking outside of the box, you know, like. Yeah. Like the top of the rocket. Again, it's it, again, it falls into those other rule categories. So as long as it's not metal, as long as it's not sharp, as long as it's it's um, like we've had teams put rubber bands and stuff in there and to help with, maybe with the nose cone coming off, as long as it's not uh, falling under those commercially bought products that are specifically for rockets, you're good to go. Okay, I just wanted to make sure another thing, I'm sorry, is nose cones. If you have examples of like what we could use. Yeah. Uh, restrictions. Yeah, um, so what I've always seen do, again, we've seen uh, like soccer cones, like the orange ones that, uh, like the plastic orange ones that, not the flat ones, but the ones that make like the the triangle, we've seen those. We've seen teams with like, they just use like the the bottom of a two liter bottle that has the spout, but they put a cap on it and they put, they flip it over and put it on the other one. So we've seen that you can use, we've seen foam board, we've seen um trying to think what else we've seen that those are two probably the most popular ones is uh the soccer cone and the they just cut the top off a two liter bottle uh those have been the two popular ones that we see but again we it's it's there's room to be creative we've seen teams whose rocket was you know uh 60 inches tall and the nose cone was just um just flat and that was the kind of their goal so you have a lot of freedom with that stuff as long as it falls under you know the category of not being sharp and not being commercially bought commercially bought all right got it thank you so much yep and also before i forget um ryan are you available or is there someone available that if we have any specific questions we can email them yep yep you shoot uh you shoot me an email i believe my email is on the website it might not be, but I'll give you guys that email. Uh, I'll type it in the chat right now so you guys can and uh, write it down. Also, you can throw the questions into the FAQs. Yep. So and the then FAQs I get copies. Yep. Will be copied to Ryan, and Ryan will answer those. Yep, I get I get sent those as well. So, I, but I have no problem. I have my email address. I put it in the chat. So if you guys ever have any questions like that, shoot me an email. All right, we got another. Sergio's got a hand up. All right. 
Hey, hey Ryan, a quick question. I didn't notice anything different from last year. Is there any role changes that are different from last year? Um, I believe uh, the only thing that should change is the color of the bottle. Other than that, I believe it's pretty much the same. Okay, thank you. Yep. Anybody else? All right. Rachel's got one. Or Rochelle, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, you're 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 correct. It is Rochelle, but okay. it's her husband, okay. so <laughs> no problem. She's got a really deep voice. Um, <laughs> so uh, it is uh, the color of the bottle is clear, just like yep. like last year. Just like it was last year. Well, then there we go. Then it's clear again this year. Very so, good. thank you. Yep. All right. Anybody else? Yeah, re rest of the rest of the addition, right. other than the pressure vessel, right? The main vessel can be any color. Yes, yes. You can have clear for um the pressure vessel, which it has to be. But then, like, say you grab like a green, like seven up two liter, and that's what you want to build with and build on top. That's all. That's totally fine. It's just the pressure vessel just has to be clear. It also helps us see what's going on in there too, in case. You know, somebody tries to you know add something that's not water without us knowing. So that helps as well. Uh, what's the best? I got a question in the chat here. What's the best way to have kids test their rockets? Um, so a lot of schools have their own launcher. Um, that's what we've seen a lot is schools tend to have one in the storage room somewhere. Um, but there is other ways to test it. Um, Actually, no, the launcher is pretty much it. But the launchers that I'm also talking about aren't the, like the ones that we have at competition. They're very, very similar. But you can you can make one really, really easily um, just with a bicycle pump and something that holds the rocket in place um, and to shoot it off. A lot of schools have one. You can also find them on Amazon for, I think, I sent one to a team last year who asked for like 35, between 35 and 40 bucks. And a lot of schools have... Uh, and I can't speak for your school, but a lot of schools seem to have um, covered that cost for the kids in the past. But I don't know each school's uh, mindset when it comes to that, but that's what's happened in the past for practices. Um, there's also, in the past, there's been uh, practice tournaments, which again, this year, it's a little bit different. Um, I don't know the plan for those as well. Manish can probably speak a little bit better on that yeah, than me. No practice tournaments. Yep. We tried to have, we were thinking to have one common practice tournament because normally practice tournaments are different by district. Utica has their own, uh, South Macomb has their own, uh, Chippewa has their own. But uh, this year with the way the COVID is, no school is ready. Uh, to allow kids and the use of the facilities. So we were even thinking to try having a little mini tournament before the tournament at Macomb. But even Macomb is locked down to end of the March. So uh, very certain, very, very, very certain that there won't be a, a you know, test tournament or mock tournament. Well, there we, there we go. Um, so again, Generally, the, the one more thing, or two more things. Uh, if you go to the Macomb SO webpage in elementary uh, current events, uh, there is a little section in there under what about a rocket, how to build your own. Yep. This is how I built mine 15 years ago, or some like that, uh, using a metal electric box. Uh, as the frame, mounting it on the little wood platform and, you know, using T50, I believe, T50 valve that generally is used in the truck tires as a locking mechanism into the bottle opening and uh, using bicycle pump to pressurize it. It's out there, but I planned... I'm going to do my best. I always do a couple open sessions where I send an email. Weather always comes into play, so I really can give you like two weeks out. But generally, I try to do my best and say, 
I'm looking 10 days out, weather looks good, and expect an, another confirming email in, in three to five days. And then I will, I generally am at the uh, school on 16 and Dodge Park. Uh, uh, I think it's uh, Utica IB. So generally there, and I'm there for a couple hours. You can come and launch it as many times as you want. Yeah, and those are again. Those are usually by based on interest in them, and and you know if we this year, who knows what's going to happen with that. But we can. We'll, we're always open to it as well. So, um, any other questions? All right, we good to go, Manish. Yep, I think we are good to go. We got everything oh. covered. If you want to look up what the uh, launcher looks like, I had it on earlier on the screen in PowerPoint presentation. Macomb Asso Facebook web page mm -hmm. right, uh, has a whole bunch of pictures that Mike took over the last three, four years. And you can see quite a few kids launching in there. So you can go look it up there. And if you have any questions, you can send either a FAQ request or send a request to Ryan. And between me and Ryan, we'll get the answer to you. Absolutely. Well, all right. It was nice to uh, talk to some people. And uh, hopefully looking forward to a good Science Olympiad this year. So yep. have a great one, everybody. All right. Thank you. Yep. See you guys. Thank you.